Hi, everybody. Um, we're Barb and Ray Madoran from Scottsdale, Arizona. We're master coordinators in the OPA group. And some people ask on a regular basis, what is OPA? What does that mean? Many years ago, when Mary and Gary Loomis started their business, um, they were called Loomis Associates, I believe. And over the, over the years, Mary decided as the group grew and more and more people were brought into the group, she wanted something that was more generic that would encompass everyone. So she decided to call the group Organic Products Associates. So that's where OPA comes from. And we're thankful to Rob, their son, because both of them have passed, um, that he keeps these calls going and perhaps even initiated them, I'm not sure. But at any rate, once a month, you have an opportunity to come to a call like this and we host a speaker. And tonight, I'm going to let Ray introduce Rick because he's got 30 minutes and he's got another meeting. So he's got is, less, yeah, 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 he's got a he's got a meeting coming up yes, real quick. So it's going to be quick. <laughs> and if you have questions afterwards, we'll take care, we'll of, take care of it. So them. Ray, go ahead. Okay, um, let me tell you some things you probably know about Rick Seymour. He, he's been in Shackley. He and Aldana, his wife Aldana, have been in Shackley uh, going on 40 years, 39 years, going on 40, 40 years. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's asked to speak all over the field because he's one of the best speakers in Shackley. And, and so, you know, people always want Rick to come and, and speak to him. And we, we've got him tonight. So we, we've been really fortunate about that. Um, Rick, Rick was uh, in the corporate world for a lot of years. Uh, and he, he, he really didn't like the office um politics and all the things that go on in the corporate world, the dog eat dog kinds of stuff. And when he had the opportunity to get into Shackley, he saw that opportunity as a way of having freedom and getting away from the corporate dog eat dog uh, day in and day out kind of thing. And and over the, the 39 years that they've been in Shackley, they were master coordinators, uh, one of the best groups in in uh, in the Shackley. They're up in the uh, Colorado area, great state of Colorado. But let me, let me tell you a couple things about this guy you may not know. Well, he's he was a he was a um, a rocket scientist, a, a rock yes a, a rocket scientist. He worked with NASA. Uh, he worked with the shuttle program. He was on the uh, he he worked on the first lander. Uh, in uh, the Mars lander uh, 45 years ago. Um, he worked in Skylab, which was uh, the first space station. Uh, he's worked the shuttle programs. Uh, I mean, th this this guy, yeah, and then Rick says, well, it was interesting work. You know, to me, that's amazing work is what it is, what he was doing. It wasn't just interesting. It was unbelievable, the things that he was involved in and stuff like that. He's quite a guy. He's a good friend. And uh, I'm going to let him go and me stop talking so that he can uh, give us our presentation on the seven magic, seven magic questions that will lead to a yes. Rick. Ray, thank you so much. Uh, you know, just, just to continue that um, bit of an opening, thank you for that. I was the stereotypical engineer, aerospace engineer. I had zero people skills. I would not eat lunch in the company cafeteria because somebody might talk to me. So all of a sudden I find myself in a people business. It didn't register on me initially that it was a people business. <laughs> and when my wife informed me of that, I almost had a heart attack. But I had to learn how to figure out how to communicate more effectively, how to uh, engage with people, build trust, build rapport. It took me a long time. I made lots of mistakes. And over the years, I uh, came to realize that there are some things we can do that builds rapport very quickly, that allows us to find out what's going on in people's lives very quickly and find out if they're even open to hearing about Shackley. And to sort of set this up, rarely does anybody say no to me. And the reason is because I don't ask until I know they're going to say yes. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. How do you get to the place where you know that they're going to say yes? Or how do you bail if you don't think they're going to say yes before there's any discomfort for you or them or anything else? 
So uh, let me kind of give you some context for this to start with. And let's talk about what happens when you go to the doctor. Let's say that um, you're not feeling well. You show up at the doctor's office. You walk into the examination room. You wait your half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is. Doctor shows up. Doc says, what's the matter? You say, doc, I'm not feeling well. And without any other thought or questions, he writes you a prescription and walks out of the room. My guess is most of you would probably not fill that prescription. He has no idea what's going on with you. He has no idea what the real challenge is. He hasn't asked enough questions to diagnose the problem, but he's given you a prescription. How many of us have done that in our Shackley business? Somebody will say something in an offhand comment in a conversation about they're not feeling good or they can't figure out how to send Mary to college or whatever it is. And without asking any questions, we jump on them like a chicken on a June bug and give them the prescription to fix it before we even know if they're open to fixing it. So you have to understand a couple of things. Peter, uh, Stephen Covey said this years ago, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And the only way they're going to know that is if you really engage and find out what's going on. And the only way you can do that is by asking questions. Now, here's my question to you. Who controls the conversation? The person talking or the person asking the questions? And I think it's fairly obvious that it's the person asking the questions. And one of the things that I have really hammered with our own organization is that we do what I call permission marketing. You never take the next step with somebody until they give you permission to take it. That way, there's no defensiveness. Nobody's getting feeling like they're getting pressured. You don't feel uncomfortable with the way the interaction is going. And the way you make that happen is by learning how to ask the right kind of questions. Now, this set of questions right here, I designed specifically to find out if somebody was a prospect for the opportunity. And I want you literally to memorize them in the order they're in. There's a reason for the order they're in, and it makes all the difference in the world. But I want you to think about this. Um, if two, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if two guys, for example, are introduced to each other and start a conversation, what do you do is probably 95% of the time, the first question that anybody ever asks. If it's a guy and a woman, you don't necessarily going to ask that question because you don't want to assume that the woman is working outside of the house if she's a stay-at-home mom or whatever. And if it's a woman, instead of asking, what do you do? I'll say something like, are you one of those lucky moms that gets to stay home with the kids or do you work outside of the house? But you need to create a question to find out what they're currently engaged in right now. And once you've done that, it sort of sets the stage for all the rest of the questions. And for me, if somebody tells me, well, I've been an accountant with IBM for, you know, 17 years or whatever, if they don't tell me how long, I'm going to ask them how long. And for me, the number is three years. You can pick any number you want. But for me, the number is three years. If they say anything longer than three years, my automatic response is, ah, you must love it. Now, Here's what's interesting. I'd be willing to say 80% of the time when I make that comment, their response is, well, it's a job or it's okay or eh, or no. Very small percentage of the time do they actually say they love it, but it doesn't matter. All you're trying to do is get a sense of where this person is coming from. The next question I'm always going to ask is, well, what do you like about what you do? And you're going to get a response that typically they may name one or two things, but I want you to kind of burn into your brain three words. Tell me more. Because the further you probe and the deeper you go, the more you learn, the more you understand about that person. Now, as we're doing this, I want to make one major point. This is a conversation. 
You're not playing 21 questions. This is give and take, and it's a conversation. But you're going to find that as you begin to ask these questions, people start to open up. It fascinates me how many people have so few people in their own life who care enough about them to find out about them and rarely will ask them questions. And I have found that when I do this with somebody, especially somebody I've just met, not to mention somebody I already know, they will open up their whole life story to you in a very short period of time. But it's give and take, it's a conversation. Whenever they say whatever they say, you need to react, you need to respond. There's a little back and forth as you go through this. This whole conversation can take, well, for example, I've gotten a business appointment on the chairlift from Midvale to the top, which is four and a half minutes. I've done this in four and a half minutes and gotten a business appointment. I've also done it over four different volleyball tournaments because I managed to ask a question of one of the dads that I met standing on the sidelines watching his kids and our grandkids play. And they scored a point and everybody's screaming and yelling or somebody comes up and interrupts the conversation. So I picked up the conversation at the next tournament and the next one took four tournaments. But the point is, it's a conversation. It's give and take. And you're not backing somebody into the wall and putting them under a spotlight and putting on a green visor. This is not an interrogation, it's a conversation. So when they tell you what they like about it, you need to be filing that away. But then the next question is, is there anything you don't like about it? Is there a downside? And invariably, they're gonna tell you two or three things and more often than not, they'll tell you one or two things they like and maybe half a dozen they don't like. Doesn't matter, you're just collecting information. And then this is one of the key questions that I want to ask every time. Well, where do you want to be in five to 10 years? And I don't care if they've been raving about their job. I don't care if they hate their job. It's a very important question because it tells you their mindset about, do they want to make a change in their life? Are they open to making changes in their life? That's where that part of the conversation starts. So I ask them, where do you want to be in five or 10 years? You'd be amazed how many people say laying on a beach someplace or playing golf the rest of my life. Something very unrealistic based on what you already know about them. But it doesn't matter. I want to know, are they a goal-oriented person? Are they not a goal-oriented person? Are there things that they really want to accomplish in their life that they haven't accomplished yet? That's all critical information for you before you ever bring up the subject of Shackley. And then after they tell me what that is, if they've got an idea or a goal, and if they don't have an idea or a goal, and they threw out something like laying on a beach, it doesn't matter. I'm going to ask, well, what are you doing to make that happen? And I'm going to probe a little more. I'm going to ask a couple more questions. Tell me more about that. Do you see how that's going to work for you? Do you have a plan? Right now, are you kind of stuck? I mean, you want to make sure that they are beginning to acknowledge, here's where they are, here's where they want to be. Maybe they don't have the best game plan in the world, or maybe they think they have the best game plan in the world. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to mo know more about them. And then the last question I'm going to ask is, well, if you could have everything that you like right now and not have to deal with all that stuff you don't like, and get to where you want to be in five to 10 years, would you be open to looking at options? That's the key question, but here's the fun part. Anywhere in this conversation, you may decide, this is not the kind of person I think I want to do business with or that I would like to have on my team. You don't even have to finish the conversation. You can just let it drift off in another direction. You can disengage, you can do whatever. My wife and I, have gotten so good at this, even as a team. She knows all the questions. She knows the pattern. We'll be engaged with somebody. She'll ask the first question. I'll ask the second one. She might ask the next couple. I also one after that. And there have been times that we've gotten to four or five questions in, and we look at each other and give each other a look like not in a million years, and we just let the conversation go someplace else. But here's the fun part. When you've done this and you get all that information, 
and you say, if you could have everything you want without the stuff you don't want, to get to where you say you want to go, would you be open to looking at some other options? If they say yes, they've just given you permission to schedule an appointment to talk about Shackley. Hi. If they say no, it's 6 45 p.m. Then you're done. Why oh, put one. Shackley out there? Why get shot down if they're not willing to make a change in their life, if they're not willing to do any different than what they're currently doing? And you're going to find that this conversation, after you practice it a few times, is easy, is conversational, there's no pressure on either side, and you're going to find that by the time you get to the end, it's going to be very obvious what their answer is going to be. And if it's a yes, you know where to go from there. And if it's a no, basically you're done with that particular part of the conversation. That's why nobody ever says no to me. Because when I get to that last question, if they say they're not open to looking at options, guess what? I don't bring up Shackley. There's no point. Now, here's what I want you to think about. It's exactly the same pattern, not just for the opportunity, it could be about nutrition. For example, somebody's complaining about what's going on with their health. And you say, well, what's that like for you? How long has it been going on? What's the worst part? What would you like to have happen? What are you doing to make that happen? Or are you doing anything nutritionally to help that? And are you open to looking at options? Or are you open to looking at a more natural approach? Or are you open to looking at a more preventive approach? It's the same pattern. It's basically the same kinds of questions. And you'll find that when you get to the end, you'll know whether it even makes sense to bring up Shackley. And the really fun part about this is after you've practiced a little bit, you know you're in control of the conversation. You know where the conversation is going. And you know what the end result should be if they really have a need and are willing to change and then they give you permission to share Shackley with them. And I think the really fun part about all of this is that when you do it several times, I would encourage you, the first times you try it, don't try to get a Shackley appointment. Just ask the first six questions. Don't plan on asking the last question because all of a sudden you're going to have to ask that dangerous Shackley question about getting an appointment. Just get comfortable with the pattern of the conversation and you're going to discover that it gets simpler and easier. And I have to tell you very honestly, when I first started doing this, I would be in the conversation and all of a sudden I miss what they're saying because I'm thinking, what was number four? What am I supposed to ask next? Well, guess what? After you practiced it a while, you don't even think about it. It just comes naturally. The flow is there. And it just becomes a very simple, easy thing to do. So any thoughts or comments on that? Anybody? Mr. Seymour, how soon do you try to schedule the appointment? Do you try to talk to them about it right then or do you schedule the appointment for later? Oh, I'll schedule it right then. If they're open to having an appointment, I pull out my phone, look at the calendar and I go, what works for you? There's, there's no reason to put that off because they just gave you permission to share with them an option. All right. But no in general, you don't all launch into it. I'm sorry, Tammy, go ahead. I was going to say, but in general, you don't launch into a sales pitch right then, right? Absolutely not. You can't do them justice or Shackley justice in that environment. You need to get permission to take 45 minutes of their time. Thank you. Any other questions? Lou. Rick, thank you very much. It was excellent. Um, once you make that appointment, what do you do at that appointment? Well, that's a whole other seminar. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd say that, but I thought I'd ask anyway. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, very honestly, though, I'll tell you, if I've got 45 minutes, I will guarantee you the first 15 to 20 minutes, I'm still asking questions. Okay. 
And I will revisit the conversation we had that got the appointment to remind them of what I thought I heard. And then I'm going to ask them right then. I'm going to say, so obviously I, you know, you shared something and I said something that intrigued you enough. We're having a conversation. Tell me why you think we're sitting here. And I'll get them to open up a little bit about what they're looking for, what their expectations are. And then I'm going to probe a little bit more about their goals, where they want to go, what they want to do. And then I will give a presentation. Very good. Anybody else? Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. You bet. All right, Rick. Thank you, my friend. Uh, hey, you're very welcome. I know you got to run to another uh, meeting, and I really appreciate you uh, coming on tonight. Uh, this this uh, seven questions uh, is just a, it's a game changer for a lot of people who don't know what to say to people, you know. And this is a convert. Like you said, it's a conversation. You know, there's no pressure with this with this uh, these seven magic questions. You know, and uh, you decide where it goes, uh, and and uh, and the responses that you're getting from people. If you go all the way to the options, or if it's it's not going anywhere, it's just a conversation, and and that takes the pressure off of anybody. So, I, I well, just... Ray, one of the things I'm glad you phrased it the way you said it there when you started, because I can't even begin to tell you how many new people have come into the business, and three weeks in they quit. And when you ask them why they quit, they go, well, I've talked to everybody and nobody's interested. <laughs> and therein lies the problem. They talked at everybody. They never asked any questions. They never found out what was going on in that person's life that Shackley could probably help them with. And as a consequence, everybody's like, you know, back off, leave me alone. Oh, here comes that Shackley person again. They never shut up about it. Okay, the reality is that if people are concerned about what they're going to say, then they're totally missed the boat. They should be thinking about what am I going to ask? Yeah. If you will focus on that before you worry about what you're going to say, it totally turns this business on its head. It makes it so much easier. Yeah. You know, the biggest mistake we make is that we're always telling people, yeah. you, you should do this, you should do that. And not letting them discover for themselves what is there? And you do that by asking questions. Got it. Well, I got to run, gang. Okay. Thank Sorry, you buddy. so much, Rick. Appreciate it, buddy. You betcha. All right. Night. Okay. Anything from anybody else? Can you see? Yeah. Can, oh, okay. uh, can you see yourself doing this? Have any of you started doing it already? Maybe some of the people in our group have. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually used it quite a bit in the past. And my questions um, earlier were because he, I remember him saying in previous trainings, you don't launch into a sales presentation right there, you yeah. know. And um, one of the things that occurred to me in this training is that when I'm training my team, I need to ask more questions too and do a little less talking. Mm -hmm. We, I think we all, Tammy, we all uh, maybe do that as yeah. well. You know, that's it, it's it's a uh, something we have to really be conscious of and uh, and and make sure that we are the ones asking the questions and getting the information for people so that they can make a decision on what they want to do. It's all about them. It's not about us. If we Absolutely. make it about us, we're going to lose them. Yeah. So often we have the agenda going. It's like, you know, I want them to do this and I want them to do that. And I want them to know about this or that. And when we have an agenda like that, we just ruin it because then there's pressure. Even if you don't think you're putting pressure on someone, oftentimes it's perceived that way. And if somebody perceives pressure, then, then they're gone. They're not going to listen to you anymore. And so it's just got to, it's got to be like Ray said, it's got to be about them. Don't worry about, you know, following all the directions. You know, these are questions that are easy to, to, because they just come in order. Do you know, when you're talking to somebody, if you weren't talking about Shackley and you were just meeting someone, these are the questions that you might be asking them, just getting to know them. And if we just remember that, because that's what we're doing, we're getting to know them. And that's all we're doing. The same when he switched to nutrition, or you could, you know, 
put plug in their cleaning products or skincare or anything like that. Yeah. Same idea. We're just getting to know them to find out what's what. So it's yeah. it's really simple. And, and Rick Rick made one other thing that I thought was really important too. What a comment was was is this a person that I want in the organization? Mm -hmm. Is this somebody I want to work with? Uh, it, because there are some that we don't, you know, and that's okay. That's okay. They don't fit into our culture. They don't fit in the, you know, they, they don't care about nutrition. They don't care about people. And you're going to find that out in just the questions that you're going to ask them in, uh, about people. And, and so, you know, like you said, you just take the conversation a different direction uh, and it's kind of over at that point. So that's important too, is that we remember we're looking for people that we want to work with, that we want to be a part of our organization, that we want them as part of our family. And uh, so we have to, you know, be careful that uh, we do that as well. Yeah, it's just, it's like remembering <clears throat> that we've probably all had jobs at some time in our life where we've worked with a person or with people that we haven't been as much comfortable about as comfortable with as we have been with other people, people that we would like to spend time with, and then some that not so much. Well, in this business, I mean, it's not going to go that way across the board because people can sign up online and all that kind of yeah. thing. But um, if, if we're building, like Ray said, a culture, you know, if you're building a family of people that you enjoy being around, that you enjoy spending time with, because if you're going to be in this business for any length of time, you're going to be around these people for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you want them to be people that you enjoy their company. And just as they want to enjoy your company. So keep that in mind. And then before we, we sign off here too, unless someone has another question, I wanted to mention, be sure to look at MC Mentors, the homepage, and sign up for Queso next March uh, 15th, 16th, and 17th in Chicago. Um, some of you were there last year or this past year, and it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. And he sent on TikTok or something to me. I don't know. I get it through Facebook Messenger. But he sent me this last weekend. He was in Taiwan, and they had one of these advanced leadership um, conferences. And the people that I mean, there were a lot of people there. <laughs> And they were having so much fun. He, The first one I got, it was um, all these people sitting in a meeting, taking notes, all of that sort of thing. The next one, they were playing. Like some mm -hmm. of you remember we did on Saturday night, I think it was yeah, in we had, March. Yeah, we had and, Western, Western yeah, we, night. We had Western then. I'm not sure what it's going to be this next time. But at any rate, they were playing and they were having so much fun. So we work hard and we play hard. And he's going to teach there things that he hasn't taught us before. It's not going to be something that you've heard before or seen before, either in person or on in, in MC Mentors. So please consider joining. The longer you wait, the more the registration becomes. Mm -hmm. Room rates are good until sometime in February. Mm -hmm. And they're really low room rates. So, you know, take a look at that. Consider it. If you're not sure whether or not that's the right opportunity for you, you know, give Ray and I a call, give Julie or or Tammy or Rick or, Lou or, or, Lou or some of the other yeah. folks on this call who have been there before and who have experienced it and ask them questions to see whether or not you think that would be a place for you to fit in and feel really comfortable and learn a lot. That's because yeah. that's why yeah, you're going to learn a lot and we're going to have fun. Yeah. I mean, that's the neat part. And we're with people. You can talk to people about what's going right in their business. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. You know, what, 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 uh, what is working for them? What isn't working for them? It's really a chance to get with people that are building their organizations and they and they can just really just tell you what what's going on with them and what they're doing, and you can learn a lot from from the people that are there. And we do have fun. We, oh, well, we just like being with each other. <laughs> well, and that's just, you know that's part of it. If you can have fun in your business and really have fun, other people will be attracted to you too. Yeah. So you know we need to take away our serious side sometimes and just relax a little bit, not take ourselves so seriously. That's so. right. That's right. You know, one other thing before we go to is that this is being recorded. Scott is holding this, is recording this. It will be on OPA stuff, S T U F F dot org. So it'll be recorded and, and the slides that Rick had and stuff, they'll all be on there as well. Any, any other questions before we leave? I don't have a question, but the one thing I liked what he said, 
when you're going to meet them the second time after you've talked to them, you remind them of what they've talked about. Uh -huh. That was good one in March. Yeah. I never thought about that. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And March, you were at Queso last March, weren't you? Yes, I was. I and I, I signed up already. All right. That way, March. <laughs> All right, everybody do what Marge is doing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if this is for you, then you want right. to be there. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. And, and the, other, the other thing was on Instagram. If anybody wants to get on Instagram, he's on, he Keso is on Instagram. That's now, where you saw the thing. That's probably what he sent me from. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sort of on Instagram, but not really, <laughs> but I see other people there. But at any rate, well, thank you for being here tonight. It was a shorter evening, which you probably appreciate now that we're getting closer to Christmas too. But um, if we don't see you or talk to you again, have a wonderful Christmas yeah. and we will see you and talk in the new year. Thanks so much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Christmas.